Hey everybody and welcome to a new video. This is one of my most anticipated episodes in the whole arc. So there's no way I'm gonna miss out on a video for it. And the anime staff is completely aware of its importance. This is why you'll find some of our best talents on the episode. And of course the most important thing about an episode is its pillar. The episode director. And I'm so glad we got Wataru Matsumi on the episode. Who is easily one of Toei's best rising talents. Matsumi is no stranger to One Piece. He recently gave us episode 1101, the conclusion of Luffy vs. Luchi. Before that, he appeared on episode 1051, the sky splitting episode. He also directed the We Are One short clips and film Red Climax. His recent work outside of One Piece was his role as a unit director on the latest Kitaro movie. And speaking of that movie, you'll see many names who participated there on this episode, like Matsumi Ota. Lou and uh, Too Young Sin, of course. So there's no doubt that he already proved with his skills how reliable he can be. And with his quick return this time, we could assume he's a part of the One Piece team and will participate more frequently. But now let's see how he would handle a very difficult chapter to adapt, especially pacing wise. And yeah, this is one of the best produced episodes in One Piece. Matsumi's ideas were very creative as we start off the episode with a silent yet atmospheric scene of Kid. The change of the aspect ratio as well as the creative use of one of you is one of the things you will see Matsumi using throughout the episode in very good ways. Uh, his transitions were also very very good like the future sight moment transitioning to Kid's attack. But one of the main great things about the episode is the compositing and overall photography work. Matsumi's use of colors give each scene the atmosphere it needs. A good example is the future sight moment, which is the best moment of the episode for me. Kid's attack happened in a gloomy dark way that depicts a dark future. One of Matsumi's best qualities is his storyboarding abilities. Not a single shot was dull. The camera angles were creative and dynamic. The scale of the conflict was massive. And with the amount of ships, it felt like the most pirate conflict we've seen in the series yet. Especially when Shanks runs on the ship and uses surrounding stuff like the rope to rush towards Kid. One of the most important impressive bits to me was the flashback when Kid is knocked down. He realizes in the flashback something was off and you see a kind of terrifying shot of Killer standing there with his head tilted on the brink of death. And that's how the realization hits Kid and we're back to the present. It finally hits him that he messed with the man that even the main character looks up to. However, I think there's few minor issues I have, first being the use of music during Shanks' dash. It needed something to hype up the viewer more, but it was just a normal overused old soundtrack. Divine Departure also needed something better in my opinion, but I think I can let it pass because the music was more of a villain kind of thing. And Shanks in this episode was portrayed more of a villain which I didn't expect, I expected heroic stuff and heroic atmosphere and that's kind of unpredictable. I'm surprised there's no new soundtracks were made for this considering Kohei Tanaka has made new ones for every major fight in Egghead so far. Also I would have preferred if Divine Departure was storyboarded a bit differently than Shanks appearing through the bird. I think a different angle with background animation of Shanks traveling through the water in a less flashy way would have made me like it more. Another personal nitpick I have is the narration didn't immediately happen with Shanks close up at the end. It happens before and that kind of separated the flow intended. The giant's attack was storyboarded by two young who I'll talk about his different roles in a bit. I noticed a weakness in his storyboard is showing the attack or victim from many side angles. Kind of ruins the flow. It happened with Bucci and it happened here. And his other roles, boy did he absolutely deliver. And now we go into the animation department. The animation directors for this episode is the Chinese combo we're used to. And man, did this episode have some of the best artwork in the series. They made sure every single shot from beginning to end is polished to an insane degree. I was just in awe throughout the whole episode. And this particular one needs this because the panels in the manga were drawn so exceptionally. 
Oda just loves Shanks and draws his panels in very special ways. One of the animators I wanted to see the most on this specific episode is the legendary Akihiro Ota. And while I wanted him to animate the main attack, he ended up animating kids attack in the future. And it's becoming terrifying how this man keeps getting better. He already animated kid in episode 1033. So it's also a reason I wanted to see his style here. And of course, it ended up being the best of the episode. Just like every episode Ota was on. Ota's style worked so well for this. And depicted Kid as death itself. You don't even see Kid as a normal character anymore with these insanely loose and distorted lines of Ota. His effects work are top notch. It really felt like this is the most pirate themed episode, especially this section with the amount of ships that are hand drawn. It seems Ota likes animating random fodder I really wanted to see more of Ota animating Shanks himself, but we got an alternative. And that's other animators channeling their inner Ota. And enters Tu Yong Su. The cut of Shanks dashing and running throughout the ships is the second highlight to me. He took the Ota pill and went wild. The background animation was very refreshing to see. All of that before he delivered the main attack himself with incredible effects. An interesting fact is that Tu and Matsumi both did Shanks' scene in film Red, but the approach is different here and that's one thing I appreciate to avoid something looking repetitive. Vincent Chansard made a brief appearance on the episode and he animated some cuts of the giant's attack. It's not a Vincent scene if there's no cool hidden details. The giants hit the Nika pose. As usual, Vincent never disappoints and I especially loved the water effects of the attack traveling towards Kid Ship. Rest of the episode also had tons of great animation highlights like Beckman's brief cuts by one of Mori's students who also animated the Kid flashback at the beginning of the episode. Kid's initial attack was cool. Surprising names appeared on the episode like Yuki Sato. Many other Chinese animators did the other sequences and yeah, the episode ended up being a cinematic spectacle. And I'm so happy one of my favorite chapters was created exceptionally. We still have big names coming up for Garp like Shishido, Ishizuka, so it might even top this. Very excited for it, although next episode looks a bit more tame, so I assume the big attack will happen with the main action episode, not at the end of the next episode. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, see you on Hachinosu.